What's going on, fellas? We got several tests running simultaneously here today. You can see here so far our max temp is 2,465 degrees Fahrenheit in 28 minutes. So we're going to be checking out the recrystallized silicon carbide burner. And at the same time, we're doing some testing on this e-waste. Looks like we didn't cook it long enough. Now I know a half hour isn't quite long enough. Doing uh, some testing today. Um, we're going to kill two birds with one stone here. I've got to do some e-waste processing for Najee and Basil. And during that process, there's going to be some proprietary things taking place that I can't discuss. However, we can examine the process of this burner melting the e-waste. But what I'm going to be doing to the e-waste as a means of managing it safely and economically, um, we will not be discussing that. You're just going to basically see this burner running a small furnace that is going to... Uh, melt this stuff into ingots we're going to be making some e-waste ingots like this here this is 70 percent copper and uh the rest is gold and PGMs and a little bit of uh, some other junk. And we're going to uh, pretty much, we're going to be turning this powder into some anode material for refining. I've got two different types here. This material here has already been half roasted it was thrown into an induction furnace that was unable to melt it so essentially i'm going to weigh these containers and log all this stuff and we are going to smelt it into bars like this well not exactly like this but this is the material we're going to want to see so we're going to see how much we get per kilogram in addition to that, I want to check out this recrystallized silicon carbide nozzle. These things are made to run 1600 Celsius with, um, without flinching. We should be just fine. This thing should last forever. These are a lot more expensive than just the regular silicon carbide nozzles. You can see I have uh, two different grades sitting up there on the shelf. Those sparkly ones are the recrystallized silicon carbide, and the dull gray ones are just the silicon carbide. So, these here, I have yet to test one of these on video. So, some people are saying that it may have a catalytic effect. Mescal was one of the people saying that, and I'm also very interested to see this thing running today. So, that's going to be the main feature of the video. But in the meantime, we're going to gather some data for a client. And uh, as I said, I won't be talking too much about what we're looking at as far as what I'm doing to this stuff. But I'm going to be doing some testing with treatment to um, avoid losing so much in the furnace and breathing any of it during handling. Dry air is essential if you're going to achieve max temp. So we've got a significant air drying system in place there. We're going to start this thing off slow so we don't destroy the crucible or boil the flux out of it too fast. fellas well this is not my hottest burner design you can see here we're maxing out at about 2465 degrees but we're only a half hour in 
It can take these things up to an hour to reach full temp, but my hottest burner would have already reached 2,600 degrees by now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and build one of the high temp preheats. We are getting really hot. You can see there I'm keeping that to a real lean burn to get as hot as possible. I turned the heat up a little bit there, um, or the, the fuel I guess I should say. It's not as hot when you have a big flame coming out of the top of it as it is when you've got a real lean flame. Oh, shit, I'm getting burnt up like this. I don't know about that. That's awfully thick. I don't like that at all. I'm gonna have to get a cone mold. Oh yeah. So. I didn't let it roast long enough. So I'm not sure what to think about that. We'll let this cool down. And we'll take a look at it. Alright, so unfortunately this is just one of those test scenarios where I learned what not to do. And as much of a fool as that makes me look, and as big of a waste of a time that may have seemed, I'm going to be a damn genius next time the subject comes up on what not to do with this process. So, wasn't a total loss. At least I get to write down in the old lab book what not to do. So, I know now what we need to do because I found out what not to do. And what I see that needs to be done is that flux should be mixed in with this material homogeneously all the way through it should be mixed dumping flux on the top of this is no we're done with that that's not going to happen anymore um, we will dump flux on the top but we're going to have to dump flux on the bottom for sure at least a layer about that thick to start a little liquid pool for that material to sink into um, the flux does not sink down into the material the material's melting point is lowered by the solvent action of the molten borax. Man, I'm having trouble staying awake here. It's one of those 24-hour uh, days. So I was shutting up. That's um, basically the end of this little series of experiments. Um, I'm going to be trying this again today. I've got a cone mold ready to roll. And... Uh, I was just kidding. We're not going to sleep. I'm going to fire up the second test right now, and uh, we're going to melt this stuff the right way.